Every week, all across Britain, thousands of happy couples tie the knot. I can't believe it's actually happening. Okay. It's just so unreal. The rings! But for some brides and grooms, getting married isn't just a memorable day. <laughs> you may kiss your bride. It's a huge achievement. I had to deal with the cancer and then going blind overnight, which was, yeah, quite intense. These extraordinary couples... You are, quite simply, the most amazing man I have ever laid my eyes on. ..refuse to let adversity stand in their way. I want to do it while I've got hair. The changes that have happened to Will have only made me love him more. So we've been through the uh, sickness and health, haven't we? <laughs> we've done and, one vow. Yeah, we've done one vow. As they go to superhuman lengths to make it down the aisle. Let's walk the aisle, shall we? <laughs> no, let's go to We're the pub. In. On the happiest day of their lives. Thank you. 48 year old David and Nikki, 42, have been together three years and are about to tie the knot. It is 143 days, 22 hours, 21 minutes, and 12 seconds until we get married. It's quite exciting, isn't it? Here we are. <laughs> and while all brides to be dream of the perfect wedding, Nikki's special day has extra significance. I'm a stationery designer, so I've made hundreds and hundreds of thousands of wedding invitations for other people. I've never ever thought that I'd be able to make my own. Like many single ladies, Nikki tried her luck with online dating, and in 2013, David's profile caught her eye. They had their first date at this French restaurant in Sirencester. I can't believe it's three years since we were in here first time. I know. Yeah, it feels like 20, doesn't it? <laughs> I can remember thinking, wow, this guy's really special and I really like him. Yeah, I was, I was really excited, actually, because, um, yeah, she's very bubbly and smiley and it was just so <laughs> easy to, to talk, you know, it was really good, good fun. At the time, David was 46 and had divorced a few years earlier. Dating again for the first time in 20 years was a daunting prospect. I thought, I've got to get out there and see if anybody is going to be in, interested. Why on earth would anybody want me when you could just have an able-bodied person? David was a sport-obsessed young father working as the director of a marketing firm. In the summer of 1999, he took his wife and six-month-old daughter on holiday to a French villa. And it had a swimming pool there. And um, one night I just dived into it and got a bump just, just there. It wasn't even a hard bump. Just floated to the, to the top, face down. One of my friends had to rescue me from the pool. When I was face down there, I sort of thought at that time, if I'm paralysed, then I don't really care whether you turn me over or, or not. Well, I've got nothing below, um, well, just, just above the nipple. I can't feel anything or, or move anything uh, from there down. I can't feel my hands or my fingers. I've got no finger function at all. There, there were obviously times when you think, well, why me? But you start to try and find things that you can do. <laughs> so you need one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. It's going to be really fiery, do you think? Ten years after his accident, David and his wife separated. Meeting Nikki three years ago helped David start to rebuild his life. So Nicky moved in... Fairly quickly. <laughs> quite quickly, yeah. <laughs> We've been getting on really well, and so I thought, yeah, I'd like to make a commitment. I knew it would be very special for, uh, for Nicky as well. Decided I was going to propose. I thought, well, how can I do it? I can't go down on bended knee myself. David took Nicky to their favourite restaurant and popped the question with a note delivered by their waiter. I looked at you and said, well, what? <laughs> you went, well, open it. And I did, and it said, will you marry me? And then I cried. I've always wanted to get married, and I, I'd really kind of dreamed that you would ask me one day, and then you did. <laughs> it was really special, wasn't it? Yeah. But for a bride-to-be who has worked on over a 1,000 weddings, there was no chance of a quickie down the registry office. I've seen the most amazing weddings. I've worked on some pretty special some weddings. some really expensive ideas. So I had lots of expensive ideas. 
For David and Nikki, planning the perfect day comes with a list of challenges. We had to find somewhere that was suitable for us to get married in. We needed somewhere that was going to be accessible. We, we both to need to be together. sat really at the wedding because if she's standing, it's going to be ridiculous. So. Strange. We had to think about that. Then we had to think about, about... what to wear, jackets and things just get in the way. They get in the wheels. We're still thinking about things like, do we do a first dance? And there's one essential part of the ceremony playing on their minds. We had to think about rings as well, because David can't hold a ring to put it onto my finger. All of those things that are pretty straightforward, usually, but they're things that we need to think about. With so many potential hurdles, the couple are determined that nothing will get in the way of their dream day. You come with a little set of challenges, don't you? Complicated. You're complicated. But we work it out and we make it work for us. Across the country in Lincolnshire, another couple are planning their own extraordinary wedding. It's actually quite a nice street, isn't it? That's what's quite um, funny. It, I could see us living nice. here now, really. Oh, Ian, 49, and Ellen, 41, have been together 23 years. Their romance began on this very street, when Ellen was the girl next door. This is where we started. Yeah. It's my room that side. Yeah, that's your room that side, and that's my room. It was 92 you moved in. Yeah. Ellen was just 18, Ian 25. As soon as I seen her, I was in love. And Aww. like, was. Long spiral perm. She was just lovely, she was beautiful. For me, it was his personality, because he is quite a big personality. Three months it took me to woo you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> They have four children between the ages of seven and 22, but have never got round to tying the knot. Ian, can you see me? What's this one then? I, I haven't seen this one. I love you. Yeah, I'm going to say this is the reason holidays like this, why <laughs> we haven't been married yet. Though Ian has popped the question many times. Got down in one knee and will you do the honour of marrying me one day? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did sort of say, we'll just hook up the caravan and go to Gretna Green. I know Ian's always wanted to get married, and so have I, <laughs> well, but I think it's never been the most important thing for me, I suppose. But things change. Ian and Ellen's lives were turned upside down two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lump in my left breast, so I went to the doctors about it. I had the ultrasound, had a mammogram, had a biopsy. And the breast surgeon said, come back next week, bring somebody with you. We think it's probably cancer. I'm then told, sorry, this is secondary breast cancer. It's a terminal illness. It's cancer that has spread from your breast to another part of your body, in my case, my bones. I know that I'm going to die. I don't think it's going to be tomorrow but I do know that it's going to be, you know, within the next few years. It could be six months. It's like my whole world just went splat. What do you do next? Where do we go from here? And you've pictured the rest of your life together. You don't picture anything about dying or anything. Ellen is one of 60,000 people diagnosed with breast cancer in the UK every year. It could be next week, yeah. it could be my next scan that, that tells us that I have to have chemotherapy again. So I kind of want to, one, be able to do it while I'm well enough, while I've got hair, and while I'm still here. Whilst most British couples spend over a year planning their perfect wedding, Ellen and Ian are wasting no time heading down the aisle. So it's seven weeks until we actually get married and nothing is organised. When I think about it, I feel quite overwhelmed by it, to be honest. <laughs> but oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. It will be fine. That's what I keep telling myself. It'll be fine. With everything from dress to decorations, photos to florist to organise, the couple are being supported by a charity who help terminally ill people get married. Patricia, you're all right. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much Thanks. for coming down. Because <laughs> it's only like a month away, there's still a lot to like sort out. 
but well, that's that's actually not for you to worry about. That's okay. that's the whole point of, of you know coming to get yeah. for the wedding. Do you have any idea of what you think you might want your wedding theme to be? When we met, we just liked like the rave scene and like right. house music and like oh, right, you know okay. like we used to go out sort of raving and stuff. Yeah. And I know you've already sorted out your invitations. We were looking last night at like old rave flyers. Okay. We haven't gone with tradition, have we? No, I, mean, I know. We've had a very, 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 very long engagement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And I just want it to be like a really friendly, family kind of atmosphere. It's your dream day. Yeah. And if that's what you want, we can make that work. Yeah. OK. Oh, thanks so much, Patricia. Yeah, thank you. All this way With big see. plans for their dream wedding, the couple have less than two months to pull it off. Yeah, yeah, good. Yes. So I won't die with it being, what's the word? <laughs> On your death certificate, she's a... Spinster. That's it! <laughs> I don't want to be a spinster when I die. <laughs> They're beautifully made, you can tell just by the fabric. In Sirencester, David and fiance Nikki are tying the knot in just over three months. Well, it makes a change from putting jeans and rugby shirts or sailing kit on, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. I don't normally go out there doing <laughs> dinner seat. Rather than try on his suit at the tailor's, David's paralysis means he has to dress on the bed at home. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah. How's the fit on those trousers then? Not bad. They're not so. too tight here. The, the, the material okay? is supposed to have like a little bit of stretch okay. in them. Yeah. So. yeah. David's testing the tailor's skills with a customised one off design for his suit. So the trousers come up higher at the back. It works better for when you're, when you're sat in a chair so you don't end up with a you know, workman's bum. Because um, everything's gone relaxed, I've got no muscles working around my you know, stomach, so nothing sits. So we've come up with a design. The jacket will end up short to my waist rather than hanging down and getting caught in the wheels. Wow. It's gorgeous. Will you marry me then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it with that. Definitely. I can't eat anything between now and Not October. Even, I eat cream crackers. We've got to go to the gym this afternoon, <laughs> so uh, I need to get back into shape again. Yeah, but I need to get for the seriously season. into the gym if I'm going to get into this wedding dress. <laughs> you doing well? I couldn't do that. I'm sure you don't get breasts like that without doing exercise. <laughs> You'd be surprised. For David, fitting into his wedding suit isn't the only benefit of putting in the hours at the gym. He suffers with a lot of pain in his shoulders and arms, so doing exercise helps alleviate that, which is really important, so he's not taking as much medication. And it's good for me too, because I need to be fit and healthy to help him. I try and get down about three or four times a week, but I'm trying to do a bit more at the moment, so longer sessions, um, because I've got to get into a wedding dress. <laughs> I've always been quite self-conscious, and um, I'm quite... I am quite concerned about how I look, but... Um, I think he's made me realise that it's not just about what you look like, it's really about the person as well. And he fell in love with me as I am. I love him as a person and it's not about what he looks like or anything else. How long is it going to take to lose all the wedding weight then? <laughs> <laughs> so through there's a little courtyard area where you're going to have like drinks reception. Just over 100 miles away, Ellen, Ian and their three youngest children are visiting a wedding venue. And there's the restaurant bit as well, always down this way. <laughs> Ellen's health means the couple have to organise their big day at record speed. Is this it? Yeah, this is where people will come right, in. Yeah. Most venues are booked up months in advance, but with Barnsdale Lodge available in just five weeks' time, the family are hoping this could be the one. It's a big room, isn't it? What? Wow. Chandeliers. They look like they're made of scully gold. They do, yeah, don't they? You've got the outside area. It's nice that we can see outside to the view. Yes, I get put it in the Ian and Ellen's wedding is a big day for the whole family. Toby's going to be a ring bearer. I'm going to be a bridesmaid and... Flower girl. I do think it'll be like an emotional day. That it'll be like, I like to think it'll be more of a happy vibe, considering like the circumstances. 
most people won't be thinking about that. They'll be thinking about just like mum and dad getting married. Are you nervous about anything? What, the wedding? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want it to be like focused on the cancer and me being ill though. I want it, still want it to just be like a celebration of us being, oh, us, yeah. yeah. What do you think it's going to be like, mum and dad are married? No. So I, I like to think they'll be the same mum and dad, just married. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I think having seen it, you can visualise how it's going to be, and whereas we didn't really know what we were going to do, I mean, we've still got loads to organise. We've got five more weeks till we get married. Five weeks. Yeah, and then we'll be married. Yeah. Mm, that'll be a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> After all this time, yeah. married. Come on then, you Come lot. On. Come on, you. Come on. Look at this one here. Oh, look at these ones, though. Yeah, but look at that one. Oh, they are lovely, aren't they? Mm. Venue ticked off, it's time to pick out the wedding rings. All wedding rings are important, but extra significant for this couple. So yeah, what kind like of personalisation can you do? What you could do, you could have your fingerprints and you could do them posing all the way through. I do love the idea yeah, the of fingerprint. the fingerprints. Fingerprint, yeah. 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 <laughs> when she's gone, I'll, I'll still have her fingerprints. Yeah. Yeah. That'll mean quite Absolutely. a lot, won't it? I'm getting goose pimples now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really long? important the question. Last... That's what I was going to say. How long, how does long? It take because... We can do these in probably we take four weeks. Yeah, we're on. There you go. So you got everything organised? <laughs> well, Not we're quite. getting, we're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, is, this is part of it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's got one eye. Lovely. In Sirencester, David and Nikki may have more time to plan their big day, but they're also in the thick of wedding madness. Head back, head back. With ten weeks to go, they're having a practice shoot with their photographer. You still want to marry? Yeah. You sure? <laughs> they're planning the best way to work David's wheelchair into the photos. <laughs> I was just really concerned about how physically how I stand next to David and how it looks with the two of us. Lovely. Yeah. Because um, it's going to look weird if I'm just stood all the time, isn't it? And kind yeah. of looking... Going... Kept them close. Kept the eye contact between them. Yeah, it's good fun. Yeah, I'm feeling more relaxed as we're going along. Yeah, it's getting me into the, into the mood of the occasion already. Having spent the morning planning the wedding snaps, now David gets to clear his head. I'm just getting David's boat ready to get it on the water. He can operate the boat completely independently, thanks to a couple of small tweaks. These are my nipples. Um, <laughs> we should put tassels on them, really, Yeah, we? so that, that's the main sheet, in and out, and that's the jib sheet, in and out. Right, hang around there for a minute. I spend so much time with the carer, or so I've been dependent on somebody. When I get out on the water, I can go where I want and do what I want. And there's quite an adrenaline rush as well, because it can be quite exciting when the wind gets up a bit. But what really does it for me is the racing. I can race against able-bodied people. I can imagine she quite likes getting rid of me for a few hours on the water as well. It gives her a bit of peace and quiet. And I just love the fact that he can go out and do something on his own without me. I guess that's probably really nice for him to get a break from the crazy woman. He loves it. Across the country, despite there being less than a month until Ian and Ellen's wedding, all preparations have been put on hold. My appointment's one o'clock for the scan. Ellen has developed a nasty cough and doctors have called her in for a scan. The worry is if this scan shows anything up like tumours in my lungs or anywhere else, I know that the next treatment would be back to chemotherapy again. The last thing I want to do is have chemotherapy before I'm getting married. With Ian at work, best friend Nick has come along for support. Been lots of tears, but not while Ellen's been around. <laughs> but um, no, because she's so positive, it makes everyone else positive about it, I think. How does it feel to be back here? 
Well, it's quite weird though when you see other people having their treatment as well. It makes you feel horrible. It makes you feel like you've got the worst hangover. You've had the worst hangover ever mm -hmm. for like a week. That's why I just really want to stay as well as possible for as long as possible and not have to have chemo again. No. With the wedding looming, the results of Ellen's scan could have a big impact on her dream day. We want to stay fit and healthy for the wedding, most definitely. I just have to keep telling myself I'll be all right, and that's how I cope with it, really. But obviously that's the worry, you know, the worry that it might mean further treatment. This is my table plan. I wanted you to be able to sit with your family, because to me, that's what it's about, isn't it? With just three weeks until she gets married, Ellen's worried that the results of her scan might jeopardise her dream wedding. Once you've got scan results coming up, and especially when you've had a little hint that maybe everything might not be OK, it just takes everything out of your head. Despite the uncertainty, she's pressing ahead. You want Mummy to wear a tiara as well? Yeah. I almost knew what I wanted, which was like a 90s kind of rave flyer, so it's not your traditional wedding invite. They've booked a florist. And I've got some kind of acid housey kind of flowers ready for you, oh, but, but you might have your own idea. Sorted out Ian's suit. What sort of colours are we looking for? The brightest, pinkest thing you've got to go around my neck. And set up a wedding dress fitting. Here it is. Ellen's sisters have come to sneak a peek at the all-important dress. Hopefully they'll like the one that I've got my eye on, because if not, there might be tears. <laughs> From me, not them. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? Oh, dress shopping. It's very exciting. We're very much looking forward to it. Ridiculously uh, excited, I'd say. Yes. We love a good wedding, don't we? And now that we're it's really comfy. That looks so gorgeous, yeah. doesn't it? I yeah. love these straps. It holds me in because of the corset, shank. yeah. What do you think about the veil then? With the veil, it just now looks like a proper, you know, wedding dress now. <laughs> when Ellen was diagnosed, her sisters were the first people she turned to for support. And I don't no. think it has sunk in because she no. wears it too well. Exactly. She just copes so she well, doesn't she? She gets though? on. This bit, look, isn't that lovely? Yeah, yeah. Lovely. gorgeous. Yeah. I'm sure there are times for herself where she yeah. would um, have a quiet moment by herself. But, you know, with us, it's always... It's fine. Yeah. Go on, do a bit of swishing. Yeah, a bit of swish. <laughs> Work it. You are the belle of the ball. Hi, <laughs> It's quite a special thing to have your sisters come along and look at your wedding dress with you. And just sit like you And it's made us laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is the most elegant thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and that's something that we'll always remember. Oh, oh, deep oh, breath, deep breath. When David and Nikki say, I do, in two months' time, married life will come with more than just a ring. When we first met, I didn't think that she'd be able to cope with um, the whole carer thing. I suppose the first time I did the hospital, it didn't go very well. So it ended up with cuts all over me. You don't often get cuts, though, do you? No. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a real sticking point in the relationship, but no, she, she has surprised me a lot that she's dealt with it. When you take on somebody with, with my level of disability, you don't want them to be a carer. You want them to be a, you know, a partner and have a proper, proper relationship. All OK? Thanks, mate. I haven't dropped you yet, have I? <laughs> I didn't really have any idea about living with spinal cord injury or living with a disability, even. Go on down. Having to be an octopus and needing ten sets of arms constantly to do all the things that you need to do. Having got to grips with the challenges of life together, the couple have recently started to share their story. Why did you and David decide to start the blog? I wanted actually a lot of my friends and, and people around me to understand a bit more about us and about our life. 
I doubt that anybody without a disability can begin to imagine how a person's life and perception of self has changed by a disability. This has a huge effect on relationships, dating, living together, and as I'm just discovering, planning a wedding. In the summer of 2013, I came to realise that true love does exist. When you find your person, no matter how you find them, where you find them, or how damaged and broken they are when you find them, you will know. My only regret about falling in love with him is that I didn't find him sooner. They've even opened up to the world about how they'll be spending their wedding night. How does sex work for you two? <laughs> <laughs> to be really blunt about it, I didn't know when we first met what was going to be possible. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> it can't be quite as spontaneous because it does need medication and it lasts for two days. It does last for two days, yes, which can be quite sad. irritating. Yeah. When you're doing <laughs> anything the next day. It's more of a, a visual thing because obviously I can't feel anything below my chest. So you think, well, what is the point? It's just that feeling of you know intimacy and being close and. And it's sharing something quite private and personal yeah. and just lovely. Mm. In Lincolnshire, there are three weeks until Ian's wedding to Ellen. You always use a scrap of wood so you don't tear the back of the unit out. With her scan results due any day, Ian is taking his mind off things by heading out to work. I actually started building kitchens back in 1986. Everyone likes curved units now, so a <laughs> bit of a nightmare for us fitters. As the family breadwinner, he needs to work, but his mind is never far from Ellen. Beautiful. <laughs> During the day, I fix most things or I'll build things, but unfortunately, I can't fix hell. And in the beginning, when we found out about it, it was like I didn't want to go to work, and she kept saying, look, you've got to go to work, go and do this, go do something. But yeah, we have to work, we have to eat. I hate it when she's in pain. I mean, I'd rather it be me that had the pain, because, uh, well, I can take it. I know she's strong, and, and she does take it. He would say to me, oh, you're so strong, and you're, you know, you, how, you, how do you deal with it? And, but actually, I, I mean, I haven't heard anybody say that to you. Then I don't know how I would have coped if it wasn't for him. I really don't know. With Ellen's results due next week, Ian and Ellen are getting away from it all for the weekend with their two youngest children. Get up, Daisy! We just want to be able to spend time together as a family, you know, making memories. I think we will have some more difficult times coming up, you know. I know I will become more ill. We can openly talk about it and we talk about what's going to happen afterwards. Um, when she's not here, how will I cope? It is important with Toby and Daisy. They know that they can talk about it. And I try to bring it up now and again, but it's not a constant conversation that we're having all the time because I really want them to have a happy childhood. I think if there's one thing that I could take away. If there's one thing that I could take away in all of this kind of stuff, it would be take away the effect that it has on them. But I can't do that. So all I can do is try to make now good. And that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I know that I'm doing. Out you get, you cheeky monkey. <laughs> Love you. Here we go. Okay. In Sirencester, there are just two weeks until Nikki and David get married. Hello. Time to check the fit of their wedding rings. There we go. 
Yeah, it waves oh, it through like, the yeah, rim as well. So gorgeous. Yeah. So, yeah. How does that feel? <laughs> I can't feel the thing. You should know that by now. <laughs> How does it look? It looks great. So I'm tagged, tagged now. Tagged now. Yeah. I've got another two weeks of not been tagged. David's hands don't work essentially, so kind of fine detail movements like putting a ring onto a finger are very, very hard for him. Do you want to practice putting mine on? Yeah, let's have a go. Okay. Yeah. Shall I put it go. flat so on you your put leg? It on my leg so and then if I get that, do this. Let's uh, have another go. Okay. Okay, you ready? Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> so that's not gonna work. Okay. Well, I think if I just put it onto my finger. Yeah. And then I do well. that. Yeah. There we go. What could possibly go wrong? Married. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least we've got something that works. It's not perfect yet. Yeah? I need to perfect we, yeah, it. I think we need bit. a bit of practice. And when I'm at the ceremony, it's obviously going to be a bit more nerve wracking. And the hands are probably going to be going like that, aren't they? Yes. So, With yeah. shock or fear? Yes. <laughs> Ellen and Ian also have less than two weeks until they get married. Today, they find out if the wedding will be affected by the results of Ellen's scan. What do you reckon? I feel really nervous, actually. I'm feeling really frightened. They're never going to be saying to me, guess what, Ellen? It's all gone. There's no cancer there anymore. <laughs> You're completely clear. Hi, Ellen. Hi. Do you want to come down? Yeah, thank you. But every scan, you think that this is going to be the one where they tell me it's chemotherapy again. OK, so we're just in here if you want to take a seat. Yeah, thanks a lot. And I've got a week and five days until we get married. All I can sit here and say is that I'm not changing anything. <laughs> we can wait. So you come for the CT scan results. Yeah. Now, we did the CT because you were having this cough, cough. persistent yeah, cough. Yeah. And you said the other, you were still getting the cough. Yeah, I was really, really worried that, like, there was going to be something wrong and I'd have to start chemo before the wedding and everything. Yeah, so no, sure, that's That's been on my mind, like, all weekend, thinking, oh, no, it's got worse. Well, the good news is there's there's nothing on the CT yeah, scan. Your excellent. lungs are all fine, I'm your good. liver, <laughs> kidney, everything is, is all fine. That's, that's good. Yeah. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> You're free to go. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're well welcome. relieved. Yeah. Nice to see you, Ellen. Thanks a lot. Take care. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Bye. At last, Ellen can finally focus on one all important thing. Well. That's done. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now that that's done, I can, <coughs> we really can just like worry about wedding stuff. It's like, phew. Yeah. <laughs> just. Just plan Thank on goodness. the wedding now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Nothing Sorry. else. Yay! It's the morning of David and Nikki's wedding. Cheers. Good health. Your good health, sir. David is getting ready with his two best men, Charlie and Daryl. We don't even know where the rings are. Who's got Nikki's, the rings? Nikki's got the rings. Nikki's got the rings. She's yeah. not going to entrust us with the rings. Oh, she's met you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it's actually happening. Okay. It's just so unreal. I just can't wait to see him. I can't wait to walk down the aisle and see him. Right, right. Dave, here's a challenge. It is a pull does, does your arm bend into interesting shapes? It sure bends the same way as everyone else's does. You never done care work, have you? Uh, no, not particularly. There's a reason for that. That's <laughs> a good reason. That's right, mate. That's it. Hey, hey. Oop. Be nervous about putting the ring on, your, on his finger or on your finger? Yeah. Because it's quite hard for him, because his yeah. hands don't work very well. We've practised it, but it won't go right today, will it? <laughs> no. Do you think there's something else he's nervous about as well? I think he does get quite self-conscious sometimes, and there's a yeah. lot of people going to be looking at him today. Yeah. So I think he's probably quite nervous about that. You Is it all do. looking OK? You look amazing. Absolutely. All that matters is that I get to marry this amazing man. That's all that matters. None of, none of what we've had to work to to get today or the, anything that we have to work for the rest of our lives matters. It's all about today and just about marrying him. It's all that matters.
it's time for David to marry his bride. to celebrate the marriage of David and Nicola. David and Nicola have chosen to make very special promises to each other. Nicola, today I take you as my wife. Now we will fill no rain, for each of us will be shelter for the other. I promise to love, honour and cherish you, no matter what lies before us. I promise to help shoulder our challenges, for there is nothing we cannot face if we stand together. This is my promise to you, my equal in all things. When I put my profile on Match, you know, I, I didn't really think that um, anybody would be you know, interested in me. And to meet somebody as wonderful as, as Nikki, and here we are, getting married three years, three years later. May we have the rings, please? <laughs> Beautiful. And it now gives me great pleasure to declare that you are husband and wife. <laughs> It's amazing. David looked so beautiful and as soon as I saw his face, I totally lost it before I was going in. And as soon as I saw his face, I just looked at him and it was all like... No, I'm not nervous. Turn around a bit. I'm marrying your mum. In Lincolnshire, after just seven weeks of planning, it's now Ian and Ellen's turn to tie the knot. When she first got diagnosed, one of the things that I did ask was, will she be here at Christmas? And they says to us, yes. I said, what about next Christmas? And the answer was, let's get this one out of the way first. We were just hoping for one Christmas. We had two. Hopefully, there'll be a lot more than two. How are you feeling? You know how some people get really panicky and nervy? I'm quite good at making myself calm. I'm definitely a crier. A lot of the time it's crying with laughter, though. <laughs> the rings! <laughs> so have you got anything planned for your entrance? We're going to do like a little dance on the way down, just like a little oh, cheek, oh, yeah. That's so cool. Because <laughs> it's quite a sort of uplifting song that we're having. Oh, wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here's to a fun mm. day. Mm. I've always said all the way along that I want it to be a party, I want it to be fun, I don't want it to be about crying and... But having said that, sometimes you just can't stop yourself, you know? Hello. <laughs> Hello, sorry I've taken so long. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please be upstanding for the bridal party? <laughs> it's time for Ellen to get the wedding of her dreams. Hello, thank you. Thank you for being here. I just 
to see me through. Look gorgeous, everyone. <laughs> Do you, of your own free choice, enter into this union of marriage today with Ellen? I do. And Ellen, do you, of your own free choice, enter into this union of marriage today with Ian? I do. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to make their own personal vows to each other. Ian, I love you. 23 years later, I still do. Sometimes life is harder when you're still there, and the reason I'm still strong is you. <laughs> Let's make the most of our lives together. <laughs> and now, at this time of our life, it's time you made me your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, got me here. When Al said her piece, I wouldn't have been able to say a word after that. I was, I was welling up and everything. Everybody looks really poshed up, don't they? We got married. After all these years, we've actually got it together and done it today. In Sirencester, David and Nikki are now man and wife. We, we met on a quite well-known dating site. So I'd like to share that profile with you. <laughs> OK, second hand. They're good for the occasional run in the country. Twin airbags. <laughs> oversized bumpers. And bodywork in need of a good rub down. Anyway, looking forwards, I'm, I'm really hoping to be able to continue to treat her like a princess for the rest of her life. And... Oh. When your legs don't work like they used to before And I can't sweep you off of your feet Darling, I will be loving you till we're 17. It went really, really well, I think. It's really good that we've yeah, done it. It definitely feels like a real princess, I think, today. Well, it's the start of the, start of the rest of my life, hopefully. So, honey, now. I wish I'd had 20 more years of him. But we'll make up for it. <laughs> We're just going to live it really, really hard and really fun. It's going to be amazing. After 23 years together, Ian and Ellen have finally tied the knot. <laughs> first things first. <laughs> Look at my bride. <laughs> wow! <laughs> For 23 and a bit, <laughs> I've loved you. And Aww. I still do. Aww. And hopefully uh... for many more years to come. I actually want to just take a moment and say a massive thanks to all of our family and friends for all the support that we've had over these past couple of years. So I guess I just want to say a great big thanks to Ian also um, for actually, you know, sticking by me through the, the good times and the bad and <laughs> give us a kiss, go on. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming. And don't forget to dance. Oh, with the pride and groom, I'd like to accompany us to the dance floor.
it's like we've got the rest of our lives. We've got to cram all that in while she's still well enough. Maybe my thinking isn't so much that I'm going to die. It's really more that I'm living and I want to live as much as I can and for as long as I can.